we are asked to graph y is equal to 1 third x minus 2. Now, whenever you see an equation in this form, this is called slope-intercept form. And the general way of writing it is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope. And here, in this case, m is equal to 1 third. So let me write that down. m is equal to 1 third. And b is the y-intercept. So in this case, b is equal to negative 2 b is equal to negative 2. And you know that b is the y-intercept, because we know that the y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0 in either of these situations, this term just becomes 0, and y will be equal to b. So that's what we mean by b is the y-intercept. So whenever you look at an equation in this form, it's actually fairly straightforward to graph this line. b is the y-intercept. In this case, it is negative 2. So that means that this line must intersect the y-axis at y is equal to negative 2. So it's this point right here, negative 1, negative 2. This is the point 0, negative 2. If you don't believe me, there's nothing magical about this. Try, try evaluating or try solving for y when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, this term cancels out, and you're just left with y is equal to negative 2. So that's the y-intercept right there. Now, this 1 third tells us the slope, the slope of the line. How much do we change in y for any change in x? So this tells us that 1 third, so that right there is the slope. So it tells us that 1 third is equal to the change in y over the change in x, over the change in x. Or another way to think about it, if x changes by 3, then y will change by 1. So let me graph that. If x changes, so we know that this point is on the graph. That's the y-intercept. The slope tells us that if x changes by 3, so let me go 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, that y will change by 1. y will change by 1. So this must also be a point on the graph. And we could keep doing that. If x changes by 3, y changes by 1. If x goes down by 3, if x goes down by 3, y will go down by 1. If x goes down by 6, y will go down by 2. It's that same ratio. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. And you can see all of these points are on the line. And the line is the graph of this equation up here. So let me graph it. Let me graph it so it'll look something like, it will look something like, something like that. And you're done. All right, so let's take another look at an example, just like the introduction video. In this example, we're just going to take what was talked about previously, which is what we call slope-intercept form, and we're going to try to graph another line. Now, once again, here's the idea. When you have an equation in slope-intercept form, and you've got y all by itself on one side and all the information on the other, these numbers, m, which is always the number next to x, and then b, the number off by itself, actually give us information about being able to take the data and graph it. And it actually saves us some time. Because if we didn't have that information, what we'd have to do is we'd have to do a table. We'd have to pick some numbers for x. We'd have to plug them in one by one, get some numbers for y, and then graph it point by point. And it just it takes a long time. There's nothing wrong with it, and it's a way to do the mathematics of it. But why do that when we've got a shortcut, which is what's once again, slope-intercept form. So let's take a look at this example right here. Now, this equation is in slope-intercept form. And I can tell that because y is all by itself on one side of the equal sign, and all that other information is over here. And what I end up getting is two different numbers. One number, the number next to x, is what we call the slope. So in this case, the slope, or m, is positive 2. And then the number off by itself is this minus 5, or negative 5. Now, be sure to include it. When it's subtraction, think of this like a negative 5. And so our y-intercept is negative 5. And the reason why, like I said, it's a shortcut is because this is all we need to graph it. I don't have to do a table. I don't have to have a bunch of data to graph it. I can just use this information. Now, this is called the y-intercept once again because it's where our line is going to cross the y-axis. So even though I don't know which direction the line is going or 
um, what angle it's going to be at. I do know that my y-intercept is negative 5, so I do know that that line is going to intercept the y-axis at this point right here. Now I need the slope. Now in the previous lesson we did talk about slope, but we know that slope is always referred to as rise over run. And we need two different numbers. Now this doesn't have it, but we've got a simple remedy for that situation. Instead of just two, we're just going to change it to a fraction. And the easiest way to do that typically is just to place it over one, because two divided by one is still two. So that's telling me if my line crosses here, then the direction I want to go is to rise positive two, run positive one, and my line will go that direction. And I'm going to do that a few more times so I can see it clearly. Rise two, run one. Rise two, run one, rise two, run one, so on and so forth. And so by doing it this way, I get all my information graphed on the graph, and I didn't have to go through all the extras of making a table. So now, all I have to do is join the information. We'll just borrow the ruler here, and draw a line connecting the points. Okay, and so that's, oops, it's off a little bit, but you get the idea. So this is how we use slope-intercept form as a shortcut from going straight from the equation to the graph and skipping the table. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of advantages to having your equation in slope-intercept form. It allows us to graph and visually look at the information a lot faster than having to do it as a table and doing it uh, uh, piece by piece. But what about this equ equation right here? As you can see, it's not in slope-intercept form. And the giveaway is y isn't by itself. So how do we use those shortcuts when our equation's not in slope-intercept form? Well, Basically, we just use our knowledge of uh, solving equations and undoing things to just rearrange this equation so that it does look like slope-intercept form, where y is by itself and all the other information is on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a roadmap here. If I'm focusing on y, basically what it looks like they did to create this equation in the first place, at least the left-hand side of it was, that they multiplied y by 4 and then they added 3x. So what we're going to do is pull a u-turn and just undo those moves. So first thing we're going to do is subtract 3x to both sides and we get 4y equals negative 8 minus 3x and then we're going to divide by 4 to undo this times by 4. And of course what I do to one side I do the other side. And make sure you divide the whole other side by 4. So here we get y equals, now negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2, and then minus 3x divided by 4 won't divide, so I'm just going to leave it as minus 3x over 4. Okay, and so now we've got it in slope-intercept form. y is by itself, and even though they're out of order, this is okay, because it's not about the order that they come in, it's all about the slope being the number next to x, which in this case is negative 3 fourths, and b, which is the number by itself, is the negative 2. So we have a slope, or m, of negative 3 fourths, and we have a y-intercept of negative 2. So now we can go to the graph, find negative 2 as our y-intercept, and then it was negative 3 over 4, so we're going to go down 3 over 4. And since I'm out of space this way, I'm just going to reverse directions. I'm going to go up 3 and back 4 so I get another dot along that line so I can see it. And that's all we need. We can go ahead, pull out a ruler, graph it, and that'll be the equation that goes with uh, this, the graph that goes with this equation. All right, so let's see if I can get this ruler to work. Something like that. draw our line and there we go. All right, so that's the graph for this equation.
All right, for this next example, let's take a look at things in reverse. What if we have a graph and we want to figure out the equation that goes with it? Now, once again, if we were to do this the long way, we'd have to find different points along the line. We would then make a table, and then we'd figure out from the table what our equation would be. But in this case, we have a shortcut. Once again, it's our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So if I can just figure out what the slope is and what the y-intercept is, well then I don't need to do any of that other work. I can just pull the equation from the visual graph. So let's take a look. First off, the y-intercept. Now once again, the y-intercept, the definition is it's where our line crosses the y-axis, which in this case would be right here, 0, 1. So in this case we have a slope of positive 1. So right here, our slope is 1. Um, sorry, our y-intercept is 1. Um, so now we've got our y-intercept. Now we can go to slope. Now slope, as you remember from the previous lesson, is just how far do I need to rise and run to get from one point to the next. And it can be any two points and in any direction you want. So let's, let's just use the one that I just did, and let's say we're trying to make our way down to this one. Well, in that case, in terms of rise and run, to go from here down to here, I'd have to rise, let's see, one, two, three, negative four, so I'm going down four, and then I'd have to run across to the right, positive three. So that means my slope, rise over run, would be three over negative four, or negative three-fourths. And now I just need to fill in the rest of slope-intercept form. y equals on one side by itself, the slope is always the number next to x, and then our y-intercept here. So this, y equals 3 over negative 4x plus 1 is the mathematical equation that goes with this visual information over here.